who's been uh, practicing law for more than two decades, both in the private and the public sector. And uh, you're now a criminal defense attorney with uh, federal and state experience. Thank you for coming in tonight. It's my pleasure, Heather. Thank uh, you. A very interesting case. And when you look at 22 counts uh, that Corrine Brown faces, the jury now has been deliberating uh, for about four hours, give or take a, a few minutes. Uh, they went home for the night. You're looking at so many counts, the complexity of this case. What does that tell you as far as how long we can expect deliberations to continue? Well, obviously we did not get a verdict today, which I would have been very surprised mm -hmm. at. I'm actually uh, not anticipating we will get one tomorrow either. Uh, and that's because in any uh, criminal uh, trial, when you're talking about the length of jury deliberations, there's two main drivers to that. The first is the simply the number of counts or charges that the individual is facing. Uh, in this case, we have over a 50 page indictment. There is more than 20 counts uh, that the jury is going to have to review and deliberate and uh, ultimately return a verdict on. Uh, so I don't think that factor uh, weighs in, in favor of a, a quick verdict. Uh, the second main driver is the complexity of the case. And obviously here we're talking about a conspiracy and related uh, wire fraud. Uh, typically fraud cases are very fact intensive, which is why I think you saw uh, the prosecution spend a lot of time going through details about transactions and withdrawals and, and, uh, and, and deposits. Um, and, and so I think the complexity, again, talking about uh, the, the t nature of the charge, I just don't see uh, that it's going to be a quick verdict. So when you look at all the 22 counts and they deal with conspiracy, mail and wire fraud and filing those uh, alleged false tax returns, mm -hmm. um, what do you expect? You were telling me earlier that you don't think that it would be a mixed verdict on on those two two areas. No, that's true, and I think that uh, I think that one of the things that the jurors probably spent this afternoon uh, this afternoon doing after electing their foreman is uh, spending some time trying to organize a framework as to how they were going mm -hmm. to tackle this issue of, of, of ultimately returning this verdict. Uh, I think one common uh, scenario that takes place is the jurors will take a initial kind of non-binding straw poll to kind of figure out where everybody is on the issues. I think it would be very unlikely that on the first go around that all 12 would agree one way or the other on a particular count. Um, so I think they would probably tend to group the, the charges uh, and, and try to address them methodically in that, in that fashion uh, and, and then deal with, you know, go moving forward, uh, trying to get to that process. All right. Well, jury deliberations continue tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and we'll be talking to you uh, as they continue. Eric, thank you it's for coming pleasure. in tonight. Thank you again. And you can find out more information online at first.